What's up guys, I'm Iris Shell and this is Too Deep. We've talked a little bit about Satan in a couple of our videos, but there's still a lot of confusion in the church as to who he is. So let's just dive right into this. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 says, And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. I want to point out a couple things to you guys real quick. He's called the great dragon, that ancient serpent, the devil, Satan, and the deceiver of the whole world. He's not called Lucifer because Lucifer and Satan aren't the same being. Lucifer was thrown down into the bottomless pit from the fall of Nebuchadnezzar according to Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 through 15. Lucifer was an angel whereas Satan is a glorious one. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 10 through 11 and Jude 1 8 through 9. Another thing I want you to notice is that Satan and the devil are what he is called. They aren't job positions that other spiritual beings like Lilith can fill. Satan and the devil are two of his names, as Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 tells us, which we just read. Now, because of his authority as a glorious one, when a door is opened in heaven, he can enter into heaven through that doorway and speak to God face to face. Job chapter 1 verse 6 through 12 says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Satan had the authority to enter heaven with the sons of God, special angels, and walk into the presence of God, accusing Job to God's face. There's no fear, trembling, or some form of respect in this account. Whereas the seraphim that Isaiah saw had their faces and feet covered as they cried out, Holy, holy, before the throne of God. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 7. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. There's reverence and fear for the Lord from the seraphim and from Isaiah. Whereas Satan just walks right into God's presence and accuses Job to God's face. There's no sign of fear from him. The fact that God allowed this and didn't strike him down tells me that it's because of his authority. Here's another example, Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 through 2. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, O Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked from the fire? The Lord used his own name to rebuke Satan as Michael did. So Satan's authority, though not greater than God's, 
as he was thrown down from heaven according to Revelation chapter 12 verses 8 through 12 has to be quite great. I believe this is why he is referred to as the great dragon. He is great because of his authority as a glorious one. He's a dragon because he's a beast of the field, specifically that ancient serpent. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Satan is specifically that ancient serpent from the Garden of Eden that deceived Eve. Genesis chapter 3 verse 13 through 15. This gave him the title, the deceiver of the whole world. He was the very first deceiver and still continues to deceive the masses to this day. I believe this was Satan corrupting his purpose. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9, which we just read, doesn't refer to Satan in the same way it did in verses 2 and 3 of that same chapter. Here's what I'm talking about. Revelation chapter 12 verse 2 through 4 says, She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. Satan was originally called the great red dragon. But in verse 9, he's only referred to as the great dragon. Now, I've never been one to believe that God just does anything just for so. So I believe that there is a purpose. The word translated as red is the Greek word pyros, which means fiery red. It's only used one other time in scripture, and that's to describe the second horseman's horse. This horseman took peace from the earth. Revelation chapter 6 verse 4. Now with that said, this doesn't necessarily mean that this color is describing bad or evil. Think about this for a second. It's not just any red, it's a fiery red. And we are to be refined in fire and tried by fire. Psalms 12, 6, Psalm 66, verse 10, 1 Corinthians 3, 11, 1 Peter 1, 7, Isaiah 48, 10, and Proverbs 17, 3. I believe that Satan's original purpose was to test creation, but instead of testing Eve, he deceived her. Why? Because of envy. For how we came to that conclusion, check out our video, Why Did the Serpent in the Garden of Eden Tempt Eve?, which is under our Too Deep category or playlist. I believe that this is why God asked Satan if he considered Job in Job chapter 1 verse 6 through 12, which we read earlier. It also makes sense why his second account of being in heaven says that Satan went to present himself before the Lord and then was asked if he considered Job again in Job chapter 2 verse 1 through 7. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still holds fast his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without reason. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, all that a man has he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hand. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with loathsome sores from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. I want you to notice that God said that Satan incited him against Job to destroy Job. But who was it that actually went after Job? Was it God or Satan? It was Satan. Here's what I'm getting at. When David numbered Israel and Judah, he sinned and brought the wrath of God upon him and his people. But look at what the scripture says happened. 2 Samuel chapter 24 verse 1 says, 
Again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he incited David against them, saying, Go number Israel and Judah. Now look at how Chronicles records the story. Then Satan stood against Israel and incited David to number Israel. This is the same event. It's not a contradiction. It's not insinuating that the Lord God and Satan are the same being. No, it's saying that Satan had a purpose. And each time he went out, he went out on God's behalf, even if he ultimately corrupted his purpose in the end. For instance, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Who went to Sodom to check the city to see if the cries against it were true and then ultimately destroyed it? Genesis chapter 18 verse 20 through 22. Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. The Lord himself didn't go down to Sodom, but he sent two angels on his behalf. He didn't personally destroy the cities, but the two angels did on his behalf. Therefore, we can understand that testing was Satan's original purpose, which is why he was the most prudent of all the beasts of the field. For this reason, he is originally called the Great Red Dragon in Revelation 12. But when he's thrown down from heaven in verse 9, he's no longer called the Great Red Dragon, but only the Great Dragon. His purpose had been completely corrupted and he received a new title along with this fall. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accused the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. Not only is he the deceiver of the whole world, but he's also the accuser of the brethren. Now I want to go a little deeper for just a minute. A dragon is a type of serpent, yet John differentiates between them and calls him both. I believe, personally, there's a deeper meaning to this than just He's a dragon and specifically that ancient serpent in the Garden of Eden. I think there's a little something deeper there. Revelation chapter 12 verse 13 through 17. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the wings of the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time and times and half a time. The serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood but the earth came to the help of the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring on those who keep the commandments of god and hold to the testimony of jesus and he stood on the sand of the sea it refers to satan as the dragon and the serpent throughout these verses to me this isn't just a coincidence It's not just for so. When he goes after the woman for the first time, he's referred to as a dragon. Then she's given the wings of the great eagle so that she can escape the serpent. The next time he attacks her, he's referred to as a serpent. When the earth comes to her rescue, he's then referred to as a dragon again in regards to the earth. For the rest of the book of Revelation, he's actually only referred to as the dragon. What's your point, Vanessa? Well... Satan is referred to as a serpent only when he's already defeated, when he doesn't have a chance against that person. When the woman was given the wings of the great eagle, which represents having the ability to enter into the presence of God, Exodus 19.4 and Isaiah 40, verse 30 through 31, Satan is referred to as a serpent attacking her. This is because serpents became synonymous with defeat. Micah chapter 7 verse 17 and Luke 10 verse 19 because of Satan's punishment in the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3 verse 14. Now when it's the earth coming to the defense of the woman, he's a dragon again because the earth actually has to do something in order to overcome him. Whereas the woman didn't have to do anything to overcome him. 
Now, when he turns from the woman in anger to attack the church, us, her other offspring, he's referred to as a dragon again. Because when it comes to us against Satan, he's not already defeated. He's our biggest adversary. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. We wouldn't have to be sober-minded and watchful of Satan so that he doesn't devour us if he was already defeated. We wouldn't have to be sober-minded and watchful of a prowling lion seeking someone to devour if he wasn't here on this earth as our adversary. And Peter, he understood this better than anyone. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 through 32. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. He's not defeated to us. He's an active enemy that we have to stay sober-minded and watchful in order to overcome. He's not off in heaven fighting against Michael and his angels. So we don't have to worry about him. No, he's on earth. He's prowling around seeking someone to devour. He's not omnipresent. He can't be in two places at once. He was thrown down to earth 2,000 years ago. That's why he was able to tempt Jesus, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11, and Luke 4, verse 1 through 13, before he started his ministry. That's why he was able to tempt and use Peter, according to Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, and Mark chapter 8, verse 33. He entered into Judas and possessed him after the Lord gave him the Lord's Supper in Luke chapter 22, verse three, and John chapter 13, verse 27. Nowhere in scripture is Satan never referred to as a defeated enemy or an adversary that we don't have to worry about because he's still in heaven fighting a war. No, he's on this earth prowling around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. To say that there's no evidence that Satan's on this earth is to literally deny the entire New Testament. You can't have Jesus being tempted if he's not on this earth. You can't have Peter being tempted if he's not on this earth. You can't have Judas being possessed if he's not on this earth. You can't be dwelling in Pergamum and have your spiritual throne in Pergamum if you're fighting a war in heaven. You can't be a roaring lion prowling around seeking someone to devour. He's not omnipresent. Now, I want to talk about one last thing before we wrap this up. In Hebrew, the word for these supernatural serpents is nahas. What I found interesting about this is that this is also the Hebrew word for charm, omen, divination, and or enchantment. Genesis 30 verse 27, Numbers 23 verse 23, Leviticus 19 verse 26, 1 Kings 20 verse 33, and 2 Kings 17 and 17. Now let's take a look at how Satan deceives. Revelation chapter 2 verse 24. But to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold this teaching, who have not learned what some call the deep things of Satan, to you I say, I do not lay on you any other burden, only hold fast to what you have until I come. Some in the church in Thyatira were getting tripped up by the deep teachings of Satan, just as Eve did. The reason the Hebrew word for enchantment, omen, divination, etc. is the same Hebrew word for serpent is because they're part of the deep teachings of Satan. That very first introduction of Satan shows this as well. Let's read that introduction one more time. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat any tree in the garden? That word translated here as crafty is the Hebrew word aram, which means prudent, wise, discerning. Satan understood that Adam and Eve wouldn't physically die from eating that fruit, but that their eyes would be opened. Genesis chapter 3 verse 2 through 5. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. 
Satan understood that there was a deeper meaning behind God's rule. He understood that there was something more than just dying. Their eyes would be also opened and they would know good and evil just like God. His deceptive words were enchanting, enticing her to take fruit from the forbidden tree. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 through 7. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. They didn't die physically, they died spiritually. So Satan didn't lie to the woman, he deceived her. I believe this is the source of divination enchantments, omens, etc. This could be seen as the very first divination done. Satan enchanted her with deeper knowledge and understanding than what was intended for her to know or receive. Now while you guys ponder all of these things, I'll sum everything up real quick. Satan is in Lucifer. Lucifer was thrown down into the bottomless pit at the fall of Nebuchadnezzar, whereas Satan was thrown down to earth from heaven at the time of King Herod. Satan was originally called the Great Red Dragon. He's great because he is a glorious one with great authority. He's a dragon because he's a type of serpent but isn't defeated. He was originally described as fiery red because he was originally a tester of mankind but corrupted his purpose and became the accuser of the brethren. He's that ancient serpent because he was a serpent in the Garden of Eden that deceived Eve. Because he successfully deceived Eve, he became the deceiver of the whole world because she is the mother of of all the world. When he deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden, he performed the very first divination. He gave her deeper teachings that weren't meant for her because they would and did become a snare to her. When he was thrown down from heaven 2,000 years ago, he became known as only the Great Dragon instead of the Great Red Dragon because his purpose had been completely corrupted. So there was no longer a place for him in heaven. He's now a roaring lion prowling around seeking someone to devour because he can no longer enter into heaven. He roars like the young lions do when they ask for their prey. Psalms 104 verse 21. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. If you want to further grow your relationship with God and have a daily devotional sent directly to your phone or email, subscribe to our website holdahope.org or join our telegram channel Hold to Hope where you will also receive an encouraging verse, quote, and lyric of the day. If there's ever a video of ours taken down on YouTube that you want to see, it'll always be available on our website, Telegram channel, and Rumble. So do with that information as you see fit. And until next time, God bless.